we're back here with the A320 uh, Airbus. I want to show you something real cool. Um, this is my exhaust vent. See, it's going over there. I can move that vent wherever I want in the room. Just go set up with a with a timer switch and just a regular on switch, so I can turn on and off and leave it on. But what I'm doing is, as I cut, I basically pick panel lines that would mimic on top and bottom here and what I'm doing is cutting through the canoe and all because the canoe actually moves and I wanted to demonstrate it a little bit real quick um, and you can see here how it's kind of working its way through and you're like wait but that's halfway through the the spoiler and I'm like well yeah it is in real life because that's where the flaps are and then they protrude down and away from the plane so when I'm done I'll make a fake a superficial um, spoiler here that will actually cover up that hole so it'll be just like on a real plane. The difference is I'm going to tape them down nice and I'll touch up all my little spots where the paint got screwed up. So you can see where I've cut through. And basically I'm just working really slow and I'm going to show you how I do it. My wife here is filming. Um, I have these uh, 20 thousandths of an inch shims. They're made of stainless steel and I use those sometimes and I heat those up. And then I just cut. And that way the heat's dissipated. I can hang on to the end with a bare hand. Um, actually, the X-Acto knife, I have a couple of X-Acto knives. One I use with a hot tip, and then one I use with just a cold tip. Uh, but typically, I don't cut the CPO or any other types of foam, which is a regular dry knife. Just It's got to be hot, especially the tip. You can heat the tip only and get a pretty clean cut. Um, but then these things are really nice if you happen to stumble onto these. I get these at work. I have you know, piles of them. I, get them. I work on industrial scales. So. Anyway, what I did to keep the blade control you can see how this is like all wonky. Well, that's when it's very first hot. You dip it in and it'll, it'll make it a more consistent blade temperature. And then I can go through the cut. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I just got a little conventional torch, nothing special. Turn it to a low setting. And basically heat up the tip. I start with the tip and basically get it almost red hot or just below it, depending on what I'm doing. And I'm going to get a shot of this cutting, hun. You can see how it's glowing now. So then I take it in here and you see how you, you see how fast it cuts well then I can take it now that it's controlled and I can go in here and just continue the cut that I had been making and you can cut either direction and just heat the tip and you kind of get a feel for it because it'll eventually get warm so you just control your cut you, I would rather take three cuts to make one cut and have a nice clean cut otherwise you'll actually if you overheat the foam you'll actually make it all bubbly on the edge where you're actually cutting it So you can see how that cuts through really quick like butter. Basically, you just want to take your time. And I'm already most of the way through, as you can probably imagine. And I'm at an angle so that when these things collapse, I'll have a home position to come back to. And it's it's this part's almost ready to break free. And I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to take my time. And the other thing that this does is it does actually kind of reinforce the, the spot just behind where the cut is, she had a little bit more strength on that foam. And I'll go back in and actually do this when I'm cutting for my uh, servos as well. And you see I'm just diving the, the knife blade in and the wing gets thicker as you get into the wing root. So if I can't make the cut, um, the only problem is this protrusion with the landing gear. I've got to kind of work around that because I, I can't cut that. That's a very strong point on the airplane. And it's going to be bearing all the load during a landing. Uh, don't put your hands in flame. I won't. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to just keep eating and just keep working. And anywhere that I need to cut through, which is not cut yet, I'm just going to work my way in. And then this is where the nacelle attaches, so it's not going to actually have the angle on it, which is unfortunate, but it's not a big deal. I don't think it's going to be that noticeable. And what I may do to make it mimic the other ones is I may actually take in... Um, turn around and just go ahead and mount a little piece of foam that will go inside the nacelle because this nacelle is hollow this adapter to the nacelle I guess you want to call it nacelle bracket whatever it is that's actually hollow so anyway guys I'm not going to sit here and bore you with all these exact details because I mean you can probably imagine what needs to be imagined I'm heating up a knife and cutting through foam it's not rocket science but there is a lot of um, you know practical skills that come into play here 
and a lot of it just comes with with practice guys you're gonna have to do it a couple of times you're probably gonna make your first wing look like crap um, and this is a really nice looking plane so I'm actually quite nervous that I'm gonna make it look like crap um, so anyway guys wish me luck and um, keep watching I'll have an update for you soon